that's her covered in snow with the roof on it. That's, uh, well, Dave will explain it when we come inside. So inside the building, right now we have a big opening in the front. Uh, it's going to be a set of double doors with rollers so that we can actually load pieces in and out and some of the bigger equipment that we have. In the front here, we're gonna end up digging a couple of piers and then building a elevated platform with a set of stairs that go off the side under the cover of roof. Uh, a couple of people in the last video noted how long the rafter tails were, and that's specifically for this deck and this staircase to be under cover. Right now we have a temporary staircase going into the single door, and you know, it's great, again, because it's snowed already, it's rained here, we've had sleet, ice, and everything else like that. I haven't had to shovel it once. And if you live in the Northeast or you live in a cold climate, you know exactly how much of a pain that is to have to constantly shovel steps and worry about breaking your neck going in and out of things. So we're gonna go up and into the building now. That is the back side of the roof or the house wrap that's on the exterior. Uh, it's actually Tipar brand. Against it, you can clearly see this is our horizontal strapping. So on any building that we do vertical siding, whether it's shiplap, board and batten, any other kind of modified siding that goes in a top down direction, we put solid um, strapping. This is two by material, actually two by four, and it's set 16 inches on center. And we nail everything with ring shank nails, whether they're stainless or regular nails. Um, they, they grip better and for a lot of people who are doing timber frames and modified sheds and things like that right now, there's a lot of top nailing, middle nailing, and bottom nailing going on. That only holds for a little bit of time, regardless of where you live. Over time, the wood wants to move and it's gonna open up and create tons of issues. If you're going to do a, a vertical installation, you really, really should take the time and spend a little bit of extra money and put in the extra horizontal strapping side of the building is going to be for storage right now we're working our way around like i said we got caught by the weather um so we still have some of the uh diagonal bracing in place we'll end up basically taking that out once we get sheathed over and then uh in the ceiling it's a low pitch roof but it's a very short span so we have a limited amount of collar ties above us um, every third rafter and it ties the building together very well uh, in addition to that that horizontal bracing is also keeping the building from moving very much if we swing around on this side we have the beginnings of the actual sharpening room we've already brought over all the blades that have to be sharpened there's still a couple more down in the shed uh, Andy will end up putting the tooth setter and the blade uh, sharpener in this room He's got a fan in the gable wall to pull out, you know, any kind of dust or debris while he's doing that work. This will actually be an insulated space with finished walls and then an actual door that closes. So that way there's no moisture issue in here in the summer. There's no, you know, condensation issue here in the winter. And then Andy can actually work, throw in a temporary little heater, stay warm while he's doing it, especially during this time of year. We're going to actually take a walk around the back of the building here and kind of show you some of the stuff that we've got going on. I'm probably going to shoot Dave behind the shed, so uh, <laughs> you can enjoy that. Not until I'm I'll done with the work. I'll blur that out. We have big um, we have big eaves on the building. The eave is a, a full 36 inches over here, yep. so there's a full knee brace. That'll get replaced with a, um, a decorative uh, knee or a wind brace when we're done, a and timber then, frame. And actually, we'll show you in the. Uh, yeah. We'll show you when we get to the back. But there's also there's going to be a center corbel that goes in. There's the back corbel already in place, just without the arch. We're going to put that in. But if you look at this rafter system here. And before he goes on, we have to trim that beam back. And then there's wind braces knees that go on those red oak beams. We have them over there. We just have to install them. Continue. I highly recommend putting eaves and big eaves on your building. If you look at any old house or structure, ones that are hundreds of years old, nine times out of 10, they have a large soffit that travels around the distance of the house. There's a reason for that. It protects the siding. 
and the basic structure of the building. If you look at our rafters on this end, there's the outer rafter or fly rafter, and then there's our gable rafter, and then we have a couple of rafters right behind it. Each one of those rafters has a notch cut into it for a horizontal brace to actually catch the outer fly rafter. And so those are called ladders. We put those in for stiffness and to carry the weight of the, the fly rafter and the soffit at distance. All of these posts at, from the mill, they're red oak. Um, like Andy said, we have knee braces cut. They're actually here. They'll end up going in against the beam when we get a free minute on both sides for every one of the posts. Uh, on this back side, we've actually started the installation of the siding. So all of this is circle mill cut uh, one by siding, true one, one inch dimensional siding. A lot of it uh, is 14 inch or bigger. Uh, there's a couple 12 inch pieces in the back. The, the siding is nailed with stainless steel ring shank fasteners. Again, every row, 16 inches on center across the entire way. After we get the ceiling done in the covered area here in the back, we'll end up adding the three inch battens that you might've seen on the floor inside the building. If it's a wood product, the most important thing you can possibly do for your siding to help it last and not cup, warp, break, split, anything like that, is to back prime it. I don't know why everyone skips this or just doesn't mention it. It's the most important thing you can do. Wood is a sponge. It wicks moisture no matter where it is. So if it's unsealed, it's going to pull moisture into it. So if you look at the boards, here's one that's flipped over. This is back primed. So it is sealed on the back side. And then when you flip it over, it actually has the finish on it. And so all four sides, including the, the short edge, are sealed from the weather. Hopefully in the next couple of videos, we will show you some You know the progress. video's ending because he's starting to talk like a robot. <laughs> Come on, do the spiel. To you and yours, a very happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you on the next video. Here guys, it's me. I have the battery in my pocket and uh, I was gonna I was gonna do a happier sign off than Dave. I just wanted to say uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and uh, we appreciate the heck out of you guys. And um, you know, it's not as complex as it looks. It's just a lot, a lot, a lot of repetition and a lot of hard work and uh, that's it, you know? And none of this is making it into the video. <laughs> just say happy Thanksgiving. No, no, there was something else important that I actually wanted to say about this. No, I know what I want to say.